1998, 20 years ago. I remember that year. I'd love to know what you remember. I'll never forget that feeling of every time that you walk up to home plate. When I look back on it now, people don't feel the same about that record. Do you experience any of that? Bruce Springsteen yeah. showed up. Yeah. <laughs> Barbara Walters oh. showed up. Was there anybody that walked through the gates that you said, oh my God, what is he doing here? What if you had never taken PEDs? Could you have broken that record? Come to the right place, man. We don't see cameras like this around uh, too much. Here. <laughs> Glasses on or off? <laughs> Mark McGuire, welcome to Baseball Stories. Oh, thanks, Jason. It's great to have you, man. Um, 1998. Yeah. 20 I years know. ago. Wow. 20 years. Uh, you and I spent a lot of time around each other that year. <laughs> uh, Probably wasn't that memorable for you, <laughs> but I was in that group that was following you Thank around you. Yeah. America. Yeah. And I know how I remember that year. I'd love to know what you remember from 1998. Wow, I'm going to have to go back in that. This Rolodex up here. <laughs> Come on, it's up there. There it goes. See you later. Swung on, belted, deep toward left. No doubt about that, baby. There it goes. Number 61. Obviously historical, stress-filled. A lot of great things happened uh, throughout the uh, six months. Um, and it was just, uh, I don't know, it just, it was awesome. I mean, it's just, I mean, I think about like in 1987 and uh, my rookie year to have 33 home runs at the break. And they were talking about me breaking that record since 1987. And uh, yeah. fast forward to, uh, the uh, the winter of 97 into 98 and uh, doing a photo shoot for Sports Illustrated for the baseball issue and uh, basically saying is this the year and um, and turned out to be certainly did <laughs> and you know when I think back on that year I, it, it it was so riveting so historic so exhilarating yeah. at the time and um, like I'll never forget that feeling of every time that you would walk up to home plate. Mm. And yet, it, it's funny, when I look back on it now, it's gotten more complicated. You know, people don't feel that, uh, the same about that record that they felt about it then. Mm -hmm. And so, like I'm constantly wrestling with how I should look back on my memory of it. Do you experience any of that? No, I, I really don't. I mean, I, I, what I experience on, on, a, on a daily basis, really, if, when people talk to me about baseball, it was the 98 season, how it brought them back to baseball. They still tell you that. They still tell me that to this day. Because, um, it it, you know, the thing about where our country was at, uh, a lot of things weren't the best. Uh, baseball, still trying to make it back from the, the strike of 94 into 95. <clears throat> put a lot of a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths and, and minds about what baseball is all about. Um, and it was a place that, I mean, it's almost like every network would tune in and break in uh, to it and bat when we got close. And, uh, yeah. and to this day, it, it, um, I still think about it. it. It gives me chills to even think about like national news instead of a sports news network <laughs> was breaking in. And, um, and I think still to this day, people remember where they were at on that day. Down the left field line, is it enough? Gone! 62! Touch first, Mark. You are the new single season home run king. To do it with you know, my mom and dad, friends and family there, it was really cool. And to do it on the last day before a road trip was even better. <laughs> and on top of it, Fox even made it a national televised game, which it wasn't. And to think about like, yeah, it's not that easy to turn a switch and go, I'm gonna hit a home run. Um, but, you know, I, I think about like, 
Maris' home run was in the bottom of the fourth inning. My home run was in the bottom of the fourth inning. The ball was marked number three. Number three was Babe Ruth's number. Right. Um, I mean, it just, it was like, to think of 61 was on my dad's 61st birthday. Come on, figure, I mean, that's just like, I mean, the, the gods <laughs> up above. It was just, I, it just, it, it played out like, God, I guess it was meant to be. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's how, uh, it's like, and, until somebody is in that position to understand how strong you have to be mentally to go through that. Um, right. And it's, it's a, you, you have to go into another place mentally. You know, it's funny, you, you mentioned the media circus, but what really sticks out to me was the other people who showed up. Bruce Springsteen yeah. showed up. Yeah. Right? Barbara Walters <laughs> showed up. MTV was there. Like, was, was there anybody yeah. that walked through the gates that you said, oh my God, what is he doing here? Central Time, September 8th, 1998. The ghost of Babe Ruth was so strong when Roger Maris went through it that his hair started to fall out. Right. And you had the ghost of Ruth and the ghost of Maris <laughs> following you around. What was it like to be in the middle of that? I mean, I did the best that I possibly could. And I, and, 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 and I think back, I mean, I got hammered pretty good from the media because I wasn't flamboyant, I didn't come out and give you all, all these great answers because sometimes there wasn't an answer to the question or it was a question that I've answered a thousand times. There's no training for that. There's no training. I don't care if you went to school to try to train for that. There's no training to have the whole world, basically every kind of line of media to come and, and stick something in front of your face and to answer questions. There's no training for that and you're thrown into it. Meanwhile, the only place that was my place of just being by myself was in between the lines. That's where my mind went into another part that I didn't even know I had. Um, and the calmness that I felt when I played was just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you talked about that mental strength. And so I'm sure that involves shutting things out and it involves zoning things in. Yep. How did you balance those? Well, I mean, I, I learned how to meditate. I learned how to just take this, these little 15 to 20 minute naps where I wasn't really napping before the game. I, I would lay into, it was at the time, it was the, the doctor's office in, at, in Bush Stadium. I would lay there and I, I would visualize what that pitcher was trying to try to do to me that day. And while I was visualizing, I was just sort of just calming myself down. Next thing you know, you're having this so-called cat nap, you know, and um, then I would get up and then I would just get ready and I, my mind had just taken the blinders and putting the blinders just like wow. um, all, all I can do was, I mean, all I wanted to do was just concentrate on that baseball and, and, and try to do what I can do every day uh, to help the Cardinals win. Um, yeah, it was a toll, it was a toll on, on, the, on my teammates. Uh, I remember which how was, concerned about that you were. Yeah, which which sort of sucked, you know, because I felt so bad. It's like, you're, you know, Ray Langford and, and, and the guys and, and just having great games and pitching more, Matt Morris and everybody just doing so well. And then next thing you know, it's like they don't want to talk to them. They want to talk to they want to talk to me. I felt bad. It's like these guys are just they're having a great they had a great game. Why, why, why wouldn't you want to talk to them? And and, and I, I really felt bad about that. I know you did. And you know, it's funny, you, you mentioned the media circus, but what really sticks out to me was the other people who showed up. Bruce Springsteen yeah. showed up. Yeah. Right? Barbara Walters <laughs> showed up. MTV was there. Like, was, was there anybody yeah. that walked through the gates that you said, oh my God, what is he doing here? The, the boss, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> It's the boss. Bruce Springsteen was leaning against the batting cage watching yeah, you take I'm BP. I'm still waiting man. for that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that's the, that's the part you think about. And you go, oh my gosh. I mean, I mean these these other in other crafts of the world. I mean, they their their eyes are on you. It's like you don't really realize that is happening. Right. You know, when you're when you're doing that, and you think you sit back and you sit there and you go, wow. You know, I mean, uh, you know, the chance after the year I went and did David Letterman and Rosie O'Donnell and did these shows and stuff. And wow. I'm sitting there going. <laughs> I'm sitting in 
you know, David Letterman's right next. I'm like, wow. I mean, it's unbelievable how cold that that set is. It was like 35 <laughs> degrees. And but I mean, it's just you, you get to do these things, you know, um, and th those are great memories. Yeah, well, you know, that was the thing. It wasn't just a baseball story. This was a this was an American story. Um, this was something that little old ladies walking down Main Street, they knew exactly what that record meant. I mean, doesn't that sum up the magnitude of the feat? I mean, they brought in Rogers bat the day of that day. It was like the family, wow. the, the whole family came in. I mean, I, I remember touching the bat. I remember holding the bat. I remember, and it was like, it, and it was almost like it, it happened. It, it was like, the bottom of the fourth, and, um, and and when Roger hit his, and I hit it, I, I I was in on the top of the fourth inning. I'm out there on the field, and and I swear, I mean, I was floating. I mean, it's almost like I knew it was going to happen. Really? Again? I mean, again? I mean, at that inning, the next inning, the half inning, and and but then again, I get in the box, and I'm like going, wait a minute, and I get a pitch to hit Stephen Traxel. Line drive, and it happened to be the shortest home run of the, <laughs> of the I, year. I think we it was right, right over the, the left field, right down the line, and it was like one of those things where I'm mean, like, I gotta get my, I gotta get in gear. I don't get many doubles, and here, here I'm going. And then next thing you know, it leaves the ballpark. Um, you know, uh, it was, it was really, so, really cool. So you were conscious of the fact that Maris had hit his in the fourth inning. I felt my body just, like, float, like, like he was inside my body. So wow. it, it was, uh, um, I mean, I get chills to <laughs> think about it. Ever had that feeling after any home run you ever hit? Um, I did. I had, I had that feeling one time uh, when I signed the contract in St. Louis. Uh, they announced it. Oh, yeah. Uh, my first at bat. Uh, and I remember them announcing the, the contract. And, and I signed, the, you know, 45, 50,000 are standing up. And I felt like I was that far uh -huh. off the ground. And, and then I hit, I think, one of my longest home runs. There it goes! Home run, Mark McGuire! It was effortless because I didn't feel it happen. <laughs> so, But yes, it's, it's, it, it's, uh, it's something that you, I, I, I've talked about, but it, it, you wish that other people would experience that. I can talk to them. We can have a conversation about it, but I, yeah. I, I yet have to run into somebody like that. <laughs> Not, not too many people have lived that, man. I think that could be. Well, there's a few people that in the sports world of Michael Jordan and, right. you know, he's spoken yeah, a few times. Him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, one more. This is the last weekend of the season. Yes. And Sammy Sosa passes yes. you. Yes, he did. Can you say 66? Sammy's got the home run lead. I break the record. Sammy was on my tail. And then next thing you know, you're like, okay, you break the record. But then again, you might end the season and not have the record. That's sort of a weird thing to think about because it's right. like, wait a minute. So playing against Montreal, Friday night game, all the stadium TVs, I'm out on the field, and all the stadium TVs, you can hear the fans go, oh. <laughs> and at that moment, I knew that Sammy had hit a home run, and I knew that he had passed me. Um, and I, and in that second, I said, I got to stick it. I got to go into another gear. And it, it's, it's again, it's one of those things. You, it, it's hard to explain to people. I put my mind into another gear, and I said, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Oh! In the field, number seventy. How much more can you give us, Big Mac? Number seventy. I broke the record. I, I want to keep the record. I put it on another gear. I let myself just go to another spot in my mind and five home runs later ended up with 70. Let, let's play the like the what if game. Mm -hmm. What if you had never taken PEDs? Could you have broken that record? Let, let's play the like the what if game. Mm -hmm. What if you had never taken PEDs? Could you have broken that record? Yeah. You're yeah. sure you could? Absolutely. Tell me why you think that. I just know myself. I just know. Yeah. I was a born home run hitter. I was a born home run hitter. I mean, um, 
unfortunately I did. And I've regretted it. I've, I've talked about that. I know. I've regretted it. Um, didn't need to. That's the thing. Didn't need to. Um, but I know deep down inside, I know me as a hitter. And I know what I did in that box. And I know how strong my mind is. And I know what kind of hitter I became. And yes, yes, definitely. Since testing, obviously nobody has come close to 70. So how can you be sure what you could and couldn't have done? I'm, I'm just, just something because that- I just know, I just know who I am. I just uh -huh. know, it's like, believe me, I, 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 I truly believe, I truly believe there's a few people that I've seen swing in this game. And I truly believe that record will, that record will be taken. I truly do. You think that somebody's going to break Barry Bonds record? Yeah. Got any names? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of them <laughs> over in New York. Senior Aaron Judge goes yard. They're big, they're very strong, and one has made incredible adjustments in the six or seven years he's played, and one has just started to make adjustments. And um, when you watch them swing and the way they go about it, um, that's just my belief. That's what I truly believe. I mean, I love, I love, I admire, I admire what they, what they're doing, and um, it's going to be fun to watch over the years. I had a player last year when Judge was trying to break my all-time rookie record, and he point blank asked me, "How, how did you do on your rookie year?" Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and I, I sort of chuckled. I said, "I did pretty well. I did pretty well." <laughs> At least he knew you played. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of you in a lot of ways. You're so grounded. Right. And you know, the thing is, is like, yeah, I, that's what I get too. And the thing is, is like, he, he's being brought up in New York, which is obviously one of the toughest places to play sports in the world. But it seems like it hasn't phased him, hasn't gotten to right. him. Yeah, it's going to be really, really scary, him and Stanton. I mean, it, 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 it really is. Do you think one of them is going to break Barry's record? Yeah, if not both, I, I think they're gonna, the, the thing is, wow. is they're gonna have each other push each other. That's the thing. It's like they're gonna, they will have this probably competition with. So you think they're gonna, like they could hit 150 homers some year? Uh, I would never rule it out. No, I would never rule it out. All right, let's do the what if game again. Um, if you had never taken PEDs, do you believe you'd be in the Hall of Fame right now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, or in that 56% range now. Um, yeah, they're you, Hall of Famers. Yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they're right. Hall of Famers. I mean. Well, you know, um, I, I was somebody who voted for you every year un, 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 until you said, I wouldn't vote for myself, right? That you said that, I believe, in the Bob Costas interview. Do you regret saying that? When, when people ask questions and you, you're technically not prepared for it, yeah, you might say some things that are a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 just one of those things with, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd have to see that interview again. I mean, a lot of these interviews I've done about that stuff was years and years ago, but, right. um, you know, unfortunately there wasn't any testing. There, there, there wasn't anything going on. Um, the game has done a terrific job of doing what they're doing now. Um, I commend them for doing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we all wish that it went on when we had played, but unfortunately it didn't. If there had been testing, would you have taken PED? Absolutely not, no, no way. So it was the fact that it was the culture and so many people around you were doing it? I, I don't know about so many people around doing it, because I, I can tell you that, that it wasn't a conversation. It was not a conversation in the clubhouse? No. Mm -hmm. No matter what people have come out and said, it was not a conversation, at least with me, it was not a conversation at all. Okay. Um, I, I know how much you've helped people in your time as a hitting coach. That, now you're a bench coach. Yeah. I mean, when you're a bench coach, that often leads to managing. That's what they say, yes. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, so two things. A, do you want to manage? B, do you think that the the noise has lifted to the point where someone would hire you? Great question. I don't know. Um, do I want to match? I've never ruled it out. I've never ruled it out. Um, do I love the position I'm in right now? Absolutely. What's happening here in San Diego is exciting. The talent and 
the positions that we're at and the way, way AJ Preller is, and his crew have gotten the minor leagues and gotten all this talent and ready to flourish. It would be tough to, to, to leave here because it's, it's, it's so exciting here. So, but again, to answer your question, I, guess, I, I would never rule it out, but I just love what's going on here. As I watched you kind of walk around the field today and how comfortable you looked, the, the word that came to mind for me about you as, as a coach is normal. Like there's no sideshow anymore, right? There's no spotlight anymore. It's just normal. Does that feel like the right word to you? Well, I, I think I'm a normal guy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like, this is like, this brings me back to the day when I was playing. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I want to be normal. I, 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 I want to be, I like watching. I like observing. And then there's, there's a time and a place to say something. And, and that's the thing, it's like, when I got back into the game, it is difficult to coach. You think you can coach because if you play it and you have success, but it is difficult to learn how to coach. Uh, yeah, I, I've, had some, I, I've had some mistakes learning how to coach. I've said some things that, that I probably should have held back or whatever, but that's how you learn, you learn from failure. And, um, and what I've really learned is like, I'd rather observe, file it, and there's always a time, because sometimes I think one of the best times a coach best is to say nothing. As you say nothing, by you saying nothing, it almost makes them want to come and hey, what what you? you I, I noticed you've been watching me. What what do you think? Instead of because players today, everybody has their own guy today. We didn't have that back in the day. Everybody has their own pitching guru, their hitting guru, their base running guru, their strength guru. So they have all these, these voices in their head. <laughs> and so why learning and understanding and watching, there, there's a time and a place that they, they'll come to you. There, there's no reason to be in somebody's face at all given time. Yeah, well coming from where you came from 20 years ago, did you ever <laughs> think that normal could feel so good? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I mean, it, it's it's it, living in Southern California in Orange County where I live. It it is it's such a normal. I mean, there's so much things going on. You can walk down the street. You can go places, and and people don't recognize you. They don't really say much. Well, wait till this show hits the air, huh? I'm gonna blow <laughs> your cover. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, Mark McGuire, normal guy. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so Appreciate much, it. Jason. Appreciate it.